And away we go. Welcome into Chicago Bears Now. I am Harrison Graham. Happy Thursday, everybody. Hope everybody is having a great week and getting ready for an Easter weekend, whether you celebrate or not. Happy opening day as well. And by the way, uh, Nick Roloff, uh, producer, Bears sidekick extraordinaire, we are on parlay watch as roley has got something cooking uh, in the bullpen. We'll let him hop on in a minute and tell you guys about that. But in the meantime, shout out your city. Let us know where you guys are tuning in from. Lactera uh, is saying Team Roley. Got Sam Lactera in the chat. Uh, Lila's, a lot of FGBs come in. We love that. FGB, no ditty. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Uh, why is this live? Because we go live every Thursday at 4 o'clock Central Time, Kool-Aid. Uh, let's see. Uh, we got Mike in Brooklyn, Tim in Minot, Milwaukee from Jose. We got Mike in Leroy, Nebraska City from Sharon, uh, James in Shavana, Georgia, Jaron in Noblesville, Indiana, Gibson City, Illinois from Garrett, South End on Sea in the UK. What's up, JP? Uh, we got Josip in Croatia. Uh, Muscatine, Iowa is where Casey's tuning in from. We got David in Medford, Oregon. Uh, Timothy says, great show, Harrison. Well, I hope it's a great show. We're just getting started. Uh, Karav in Harrison's basement. I don't have a basement, so nice try. Andy in Lincoln, Nebraska. H. Scott in Canton, Illinois. We got K. Will in Cincinnati. Bolingbrook from uh, Lilla. Uh, William in Tampa, Florida, downtown Chicago from Juan Nixon in Brooklyn, New York. Crystal Lake from Marzo. We got Daniel in Florida. Let's ride. Let us know where you guys are tuning in from. We got our first super chat of the day from our guy, Sam Lactera. In spirit of me buying a new truck yesterday, what kind of truck guy are you? First of all, congrats, Sam. The only truck I've ever owned was my first car. As a 16-year-old, I had a one of those small Chevy S10s, classic first car, car in high school. Roly, I'm not sure if you ever had a truck up in uh, I am New York. Sa- Lactera, I don't know if this is going to change our friendship or not, but I am the opposite of a truck guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really a truck guy either, despite being from the South. I'm not against trucks. I just, um, I go for more practicality. Usually, like, I drive, like, a Nissan Rogue, for example, right now. I used to have a... Uh, Dodge Challenger, but uh, those days are over. So, um, I, you know, I like F one fifty, Sam. Those are those are cool trucks. Um, what kind of trucks you get? Let us know. Let us know. Uh, all right. There's a lot of debate going on in the world these days, and Bears Twitter, you know, can't ever seem to get on the same page. So, I'm just curious: Is Caleb Williams likable to you? And now, listen. The answer does not have to be yes. I do think for some of the reasons people are finding to call him unlikable are a bit strange, but hey, to each their own to an extent. Is Caleb Williams likable to you? Uh, Lil Dub says no. This is also our live poll. KRAV says yes. Uh, Lactera says he'll send on Insta. All right, Sam, we'll take a look. Jossip says yes. Dub says no. Uh, DC says no. Don says yes. Crane says yes. William says Penix Jr. He tested well today, man. Ran really well. Um, Edward says yes after watching his press conference. I think that's a good answer. I He really kind of swayed me uh, to an extent in that press or two. Not that I disliked him before, but like I thought he was extremely mature and well-spoken at the Combine when I got to go. That, that was cool. Um, absolutely from Sports Bash Nation. Uh, J- Jason says yes. Nixon says no. Yeah, man, he's all right. And look, like, you don't have to, like, love or hate any athlete's personalities. Like, it it doesn't have to be one or the other. But I do think some of the reasons of tearing this kid down are a bit bit much and I I think are a little little excessive. Like, DC Viper, I only say no because of his stunts he does. What is a stunt that he does? Describe one of those for me. Uh, why does Caleb paint his fingernails? It's kind of hard to stand behind. I guess I would ask you this, Ryan. Why does it, why does it bother you? Does it impact you in any way? That's, that's what I would ask. Freddie says, not really. Juan, who cares? That's kind of my point, Juan. Who cares? 
who cares that he has a pink iPhone? It's all it's all very confusing to me. Um, all right. I was just curious what you guys were thinking. I uh, do have to talk about our sponsor on today's show. That, of course, is game time. And listen, opening day in baseball, no better time than to find the best tickets available and the best prices available than right now because you got the White Sox underway. You got the Cubbies back in action. They actually are down in Arlington to take on the defending champion, Texas Rangers. They'll have their home opener here in a few days. White Sox underway right now. You got the Bulls trying to make a playoff push. There's nothing worse than having trouble buying your tickets to meet your friends out uh, at a sporting event, a concert, a theater show, or whatever the case may be. No longer. Game time gives you an easy and painless way to purchasing your tickets in just hours, sometimes even minutes before an event starts. Their specialty is last-minute tickets, flash deals, and zone deals. In the app, you will see the best value tickets for every event coming up in real time. What's cool about Game Time, too, is they're going to show you the exact vantage point. This is an example from a recent Bulls game. You can see exactly where the tickets are uh, in the stadium, what you will be able to see, which is great. They're going to show you the best prices available. Here's another little fun tidbit. You can actually pay with your Venmo balance. So if you got some extra money floating around in Venmo, uh, uh, you can use that to buy your tickets with Game Time. Download the app today, Game Time. Search the App Store, Game Time. Can't miss it. Use promo code CHATSPORTS when you sign up. That's going to get you $20 off your first purchase. Go check out Game Time today uh, by downloading the app. Lowest price guaranteed, last minute tickets. It's Game Time. Link is in the comments and in the description. Uh, but again, just search Game Time in your App Store and use that promo code CHATSPORTS. All right, we got Jason Gonzarowski with a 20. What's up, Jason? He says, you may have told this story before, but how did you get started with Chat Sports? Um, I'm sure I have told this before, and people have definitely asked me. Uh, I honestly just applied. Like, I, I went to college and studied sports broadcasting. I was fortunate enough to do that. I was working uh, uh, part-time in sports radio and uh, wanted to add more to my plate. Chat Sports was hiring. Got started in a minor role and kind of just worked my way up quickly. So uh, timing's everything in life, and uh, the timing worked out well. So um, there's no no huge secret to what happened. By the way, uh, Lactera, I don't know if he sent you it as well, sent me a video of his truck. I'm not a truck guy, but that thing's pretty sweet. Pretty sick? Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Let me, let me take a look here. Let's see. That thing is pretty, pretty sweet, Sam. I'll give you uh, – oh, I like the color, Ford. too. Navy blue. Well, na oh, bears. Yeah. Really good look. Yeah, it's nice. Little, little XTR action. F1. I literally said F150, Rolly. I mean, I feel like that's very. That's a common truck. Common, yeah. But that's like a that's a nice one though. Good for you, Lactera. It's always like you always feel good about yourself when you make a big boy purchase. Yeah. Um. So that's uh that's dope. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Fill in the blank. The Bears will draft blank with the number nine pick. Who are they gonna take? Who are they gonna take? Let's go. Let's go. Who are you gonna pick? I think we trade down. Definitely a possibility. Type trade if you think they're gonna trade. Brian Thomas. I think nine's a little rich, but he's pretty damn good too. Like it would be a bit of a stretch for me, but he I still wouldn't mind the pick. He fits them well though, because that oh. would He's like your big body to play outside. Slot. Yeah. Like, if you traded down and got him at like 14 or something, like, I'd be. I mean, I wouldn't even hate it at nine. I just think it's probably a little early. Um, Johnny says whoever Caleb wants. I mean, he can't just blindly take who he wants. But yeah, you'd like to help him out, certainly. Um, when do you think Brian Thomas will go? I do think he probably goes top 15. He's definitely that fourth receiver for me. Maybe a team takes Adonai Mitchell before him, but uh, I Roma see, Dunze from Bear Claw. What's up? I could see Thomas sliding to 20, uh, closer to 20. Yeah, I mean, it really just depends because if three receivers go in the top 10, I, I just don't know if 10 more picks go by without another receiver. I guess a lot of tackles could go and those edges could start to go too, obviously. So maybe trade down from Bear Claw, Adunze, all or verse, all good options. Uh, I guess if we stick at nine, take Turner or Alt. Harrison is the best in the business. Striving for it. Striving for it. I could see Lactera sliding into Rolly's DMs. Yeah, on a friendship basis, Chimpo. 
What are you implying? Um, Harrison, you going to live stream the draft? Uh, you can take that to the bank. Roley <laughs> and I will be here for all three days, probably every pick, even though the Bears only have four right now. Uh, we will be live for all, if, or most, if not all of it. BPA at nine. I think adding Keenan Allen really gave you that flexibility of just purely following your board. If Joe Alt's the highest player on your board, take him. If Roma Dunze is there, take him. Uh, if you want to go edge and that's the highest player, uh, take him. You, the Bears may have access to their number one rated defensive player because it could be eight offensive picks to start the draft. Now, Atlanta at eight could definitely go defense, but I'd be pretty surprised if any of the teams picking top seven went defense. Sal Eats with the five. And since it is the last stream of the month on Bears Now, which, by the way, we're closing in on a channel record, just in overall metrics this month, so shout-out to all of you. Um, $50 off, baby. We'll go half price on the Hall of Fame, last stream of the month. Uh, Sal Eats says, if the Bears tell the media they're for sure taking Caleb at one, how long until they can bring him in to start working? I want an edge at nine. They can't, like, start, like, there's rules against, like, even normal players – can't do organized workouts at the facility right now. Like, like if Tyson Bajant wants to get some of the receivers on the team and throw, they can't do that at the Bears facility. Now, they can go to a local high school and do it or wherever else. It's kind of dumb how that works, but they'll bring in Caleb for a top 30 visit and show him around, but they can't actually, like, get him in there and start working the playbook and stuff like that. That that actually The first time he'll be able to do stuff like that is uh, – during the rookie minicamp, which I believe is, isn't that usually the week after the draft, Roly? That rookie minicamp they do. Is it that um, quick? I think it's that next weekend. It's pretty quick. Maybe it's two weeks, but it's it's pretty quick. So, yeah, that's the first time we'll see him do any on-field work uh, with the team. All right, if you love the Bears, like the video. Come we, on, folks. We got to get to 150 likes here. Got to get to 150 likes here. Chimpo says Brisker got all the secondaries together. Yeah, Blues talked about that. Brisker got the secondary together. They're going to work out in California, so that's pretty cool. 354 people. I don't want to be aggressive today. I really don't. It's opening um, day. We're trying to. I'm trying to be nicer today, but I'm going to need 150 likes. <laughs> that's, so, that's, come on, folks. That's what it takes. The like monster. That's right, Travis. Did uh, Stanton bet yet? Uh, yeah, he you, got a single, like a fucking loser. You want to talk through your parlay here okay, so while if they're you, liking the video? 50 so, yeah. likes away, by the way. Um, so here's the story. It's opening day. Me and my friends have a tradition of doing these bets. If you've ever bet Nerfies, no run first inning, uh, we did some of those. Those banged in. So I'm already up on the day. But my friends and I like to do this fun little bet where we each pick a player to hit a home run on opening day. And – we parlay it together. And as some of y'all know, if you guys are betting people, you guys are to hit a home run, like the odds are pretty high. So parlaying three guys together is quite the payout. My friends and I each made a pick. I picked George Springer. My other friend picked Freddie Freeman. And my other third friend picked Giancarlo Stan from the Yankees. I already got mine right. George Springer hit a homer. Freeman hit one, too. My other friend, Freddie Freeman, hit a homer. The payout on this was $5 to win 680 That's how unlikely this thing was to hit. We're two of three. The only person we need left is Giancarlo Stanton. He's one for two. He'll probably have two more bats left in the game. And if he hits a homer, get $680. Or I could cash out right now and take $60. Oh, it's down to 60 now? Well, he only has two at-bats left. Yeah, you got to just play it out. I don't know. It's still it's still technically a plus 1,000 yeah. bet. Like, that's still a bang. Yeah. To hit plus 1,000 yeah. is pretty crazy. Um, by the way, sociology, Jason, we're just talking sports. Like, no one's forcing people to go bet on sports. We're just We're just having fun here. Um, no one's pandering anything. So. Yeah, I literally just said what I did today. Yeah, That's all no I'm doing. No one's impacting what you guys are doing. Uh, 15 likes away from 150, and uh, let's, get this, uh, let's get this thing popping here. Um, let's get to 150. We got a busy show. By the way, for those of you in the chat who know, uh, Coach T, who's on Bears Twitter, he's got a YouTube channel as well. I'm going to hop on his show tonight at 6 o'clock oh, really? Central. So. Once we get out of here, I'm going to 
go find a different studio, hop on with him at six. So Who's Coach T? He's like this um, – he used to be in the chat. He's in the chat sometimes. So watch, um, former high school coach. I think he. I think he's. Told, he told me he's trying to get back into coaching. But he's in Bears Twitter and stuff. He likes to watch film and whatnot. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna collab later. Uh, he's been uh, or he asked me to come on. So should be uh, should be a fun time. If you saw his, if you saw him in the chat, you would you'd be like, oh, okay. I recognize. All right, we're five likes away, but we'll get this thing rolling here. Hit the like button. Coming up live, we got the latest Bears news and rumors. We'll dive into ESPN seven round mock draft for the Bears. Matt Miller did a full seven round mock draft. We'll keep it focused on the Bears picks, obviously. See how he did there. Live QA. If you have any questions, hashtag Bears or Super Chat. We'll get your questions answered on the show. And then we got five blockbuster draft trade ideas as uh, maybe just maybe the Bears will move around in the NFL draft. All that is coming up. We'll get to Chris Lopez's Super Chat after our first segment. So stay tuned here on Chicago Bears now. Do the Chicago Bears love LSU wide receiver Malik Neighbors? That is where we kick off today's episode of Bears Now by Chat Sports. My name is Harrison Graham. David Kaplan, who's been in Chicago sports media for a while, does a show, ESPN 1000, has his own YouTube channel as well. Direct quote from him earlier today, it was this, or I think it was last night actually, I can tell you the Bears love Malik Neighbors. So we'll dive into this coming up momentarily, but hey, the Bears may love neighbors. I love the Bears and covering this team. If you do too, hit the like button. Who's with me? Like the video today if you are a huge Chicago Bears fan. All right, we've obviously talked about Malik Neighbors quite a bit. We did yesterday after his pro day. Talk about him a little bit more today, more fallout from the pro day, plus this report from David Kaplan that uh, the Bears do really like the LSU wide receiver. One thing I feel very confident in saying, watching him, his play speed, I think it was confirmed with his testing yesterday. I think out of the top three, the big three, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze, Neighbors is the most explosive. I, I think he's the most explosive receiver among the top guys. They're all pretty explosive, but he's more explosive than a Dunze, slightly more than MHJ. Uh, who obviously we don't have testing numbers for, but you see it on tape. He's pretty damn explosive as well. Obviously, he's smaller than those guys, so there's a bit of a give and take there, but he's still plenty big, six foot, around 200 pounds. Depending on different scouts, he ran anywhere from a 4.33 to a 4.4 flat. Vertical off the charts, really good broad jump as well. Uh, it really just confirms what you see on the film and just when you're watching LSU play. It's like, whoa, who's that? Who's that number eight guy? Oh, yeah, that's Malik Neighbors, who's just running past everybody uh, on the football field. And I shared this yesterday. I'll share it here again. Dame Brugler, one of the top draft analysts in the game, uh, pretty tapped in, says that there are people who believe Malik Neighbors is the dra this draft class top player, best player in the entire draft, which not only does that mean some people have him higher than Marvin Harrison Jr., they have him higher than everyone, the quarterbacks too. So that's pretty high praise for Neighbors, who – is a very, very, very good player and really a great prospect. He, he really is. I mean, he's got the full package. I mean, if he was 6'2", 6'3", I would have him over MHJ. So I do think he's more explosive. I think with MHJ being, uh, you know, in that 6'3", 6'4", range and still very explosive, I still uh, like him a little bit more. But the gap is not significant between Neighbors and Marvin Harrison Jr. And that's why we keep talking about these receivers, man, because – you get one of these guys in here, number one, it's insurance if Keenan Allen either A, starts to drop off, or B, doesn't get an extension for whatever reason. He is 32 now. I think he will, but just in case. And B, it kind of is just that next generation big-time playmaker that you need, right? Like, Keenan Allen's not going to play forever. DJ Moore in two years is up for a massive deal. Like, I, I would expect him to get another contract here, but you never know. And Beyond that, you really don't have clear answers after those two guys. So even if they come in here and are somewhat of a distant number three as a rookie, that's still a massive upgrade over a Tyler Scott or a Valus Jones. Uh, the question is this, because I don't think Malik Neighbors has fallen to number nine, especially after his pro day. The question is whether or not he's worth trading up for. Now, in a vacuum, I would say yes. 
Um, you get another weapon for Caleb Williams. He is a very, very good prospect. I would put him in that blue chip category. You know, these teams talk about, you know, color tiers, right? Blue chip is like that top of the line. Red is kind of like that very good, but maybe not all pro. That would be kind of that second tier. Uh, Malik Neighbors is in that top tier. But you have four draft picks. There's really good players that could be available in that nine range. I would be okay trading up for Neighbors or MHJ. For a Dunze, I'm not against it. I'd probably rather just sit at nine and see if he's there because I think I have decided that it's MHJ one, Malik Neighbors maybe one B or really close to, and then a Dunze three. I do think he is the third guy, but he's still very, very good. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. I'm not trying to force the issue, but, man, the idea of Marvin Harrison Jr. or Malik Neighbors coming to this football team, getting another big-time weapon with Caleb Williams is, uh, is very, very fun to think about. Now, what say you? Is Malik Neighbors worth trading up for, in your opinion? Type Y for yes, or you can type in for no. Pin comment on today's video, so go ahead and reply right there. All right, let's talk number nine pick scenarios as the Bears are starting to work through their options with that number nine pick. They've done their scouting for a few months, which that's still ongoing, but these pro days are mostly over at this point. Top 30 visits are going to start coming in, and Patrick Finley had an interesting report uh, about how the Bears are going to do this. He says that general manager Ryan Poles plans to break his staff <coughs> into various teams over the next few weeks as the Bears prepare to draft four times in late April. Their goal is to determine what position would have the most impact when they draft ninth overall. And even Ryan Poles said this at the NFL owners meetings. He said, one team is going to talk about the tackle position uh, is the best to go after, or the wide receiver is the best, or the defensive end is the best, and use factual information to kind of spit that out. And we'll have a debate in terms of uh, what's more impactful for our football team, both short-term and long-term. And so he's kind of confirming that, saying, yeah, like these are three positions with premium players in that range at nine, and just based on what we need as well. Uh, so I think it's a good plan. Like, hey, all right, wide receiver team, Make your case. Offensive tackle team, make your case. Uh, edge, and then you come together and you kind of tier those players, and uh, maybe then it just becomes a best player available situation if you're comfortable with all three positions at that slot. So what we'll do coming up is explore some options with that number nine pick. What are some players at each of those premium positions that we're talking about that the Bears could go after? But first, do got to tell you about today's sponsor. That is game time. You know what sucks? Thinking you have purchased tickets, but for whatever reason, it didn't go through or you didn't get the digital transfer from the initial owner of that ticket because the website you used just didn't uh, didn't make it easy on you. Or maybe you tr uh, had trouble buying those tickets and in general just quit on it because you couldn't figure it out. Well, no longer. That's what I say. That's what Game Time says as well. They offer an easy and painless way to purchase tickets, to a Cubbies game or a White Sox game. Happy baseball season, everybody. Or your favorite concert, your favorite comedy show, theater, whatever the case may be. Everything's digital these days. You got to figure it out. And Game Time has made it easy for you. And we also have a deal for you guys. When you download the app, use the promo code chat sports, all one word, chat sports. That's going to get you $20 off when you download Game Time. There's a link in the comments in the, des the description. That'll take you to the download at your app store or just go to your app store, search game time and use promo code chat sports. Don't wait any longer. Get your last minute tickets for the lowest price guaranteed with game time. That is what they specialize in getting those tickets at the last minute because, hey, sometimes we want to be, uh, you know, living with, um, you know, last minute, right? Not planning things out. And uh, that's where game time comes in for you guys. So go check them out. $20 off with promo code chat sports. All right, let's go through some of these position groups. Uh, that polls alluded to and how they're going to debate. And uh, look, to me, I obviously all three of these guys aren't going to be here at nine. It's more likely none of them are. But for me, if any of those three receivers are there at nine, not only am I comfortable taking them, I would take them. Like, that is how I would rank them. I put up my Bears draft big board this morning, my initial top 20. Go check that out. Subscribe. Go to the content tab. I got three of these players in the top five. I think it's that good of a group and if one of them gets to nine that's an automatic uh, trigger pull for me offensive tackles uh joe wall i think is i had as my number six overall player if he's at nine that's great value both these other guys though olu fashanu and uh talese fuaga really good players now 
like I mentioned on our draft big board video, Fuaga, my only question there is can he play left tackle or are you going to move Darnell Wright to left tackle because Fuaga's played primarily right. So that's something you got to work through. Olu's obviously played left. He was high school teammate with Caleb Williams, so he's certainly an option. Uh, edges, we've talked about the big three here. Dallas Turner, Jared Verse, Latu, Latu. They all have pros and cons. Turner, most explosive of the group, super long, raw tools. Uh, Jared Verse, uh, kind of the complete package. He's bigger than Turner. Um, I don't think the upside is quite as big. He's not as athletic, although he's very athletic. And then Latu is the most polished of the group. The biggest negative there is his medical history. He was medically retired for like a year and a half. So um, that's something you have to check off on as well. You know, when you look at these top needs, obviously quarterback's going to be handled with the number one pick. Those next three positions, edge, wide receiver, and offensive tackle, based on your needs and really what players are going to be there in that range, it kind of lines up well based on how the Bears have built their roster. You could go defensive tackle, Byron Murphy, Drazon Newton, a couple of other options there. But uh, the point is, is that uh, the Bears uh, uh, are going to have good options there at nine. They don't have to trade up. They could trade down. Here's Matt Eberflus talking about the Bears' options at nine. He said, what we've done in free agency allows us to be flexible, to really be able to take the best player, the one we feel fits us in for us in that spot. And, yeah, again, getting Keenan Allen, I think, really made this easier and more gives you more optionality. Like, if you didn't get Allen, I'm not saying you had to force the issue at receiver, but, like, you might have been more wanting to trade up for one of those big three if you were nervous if one didn't fall. Now, if one doesn't fall, like, sure, you might be bummed, but then if one of them doesn't fall, maybe Joe Alt's still there. And you're like, that's a really good pick. Or you could have access to the top defensive player on your board. So uh, the flexibility is there. Ryan Poles has talked about that for three years. Uh, he believes in being flexible so you don't have to force the issue in the draft. And uh, the Bears uh, have certainly done that with how they've operated in free agency and with a couple of these trades. Fill in the blank. The Bears will draft blank at number nine overall. Let us know who you think that player is. And maybe that player will be Rome Adunze. Now, certainly, when you look at mock drafts, that seems to be the most common uh, name for the Bears at 9. Caleb at 1, Adunze at 9. If that happens, we're partying here on the channel. But Brady Henderson, the Seahawks ESPN reporter, obviously Seattle, near the University of Washington. So uh, Adunze, who had his pro day today, didn't work out, by the way, but he was Washington had their pro day today. That tells me he has upcoming meetings with the Cardinals, Jets, and Bears at those teams' facilities. The Giants also flew him out for a meeting after the Combine. So he's got some big meetings coming up, including one with the Bears, which is interesting. Caleb Williams coming in next week to Hallis Hall is a part of the initial wave of top 30 visits. Maybe him and Roma Dunze go at the same time. We saw them spending some time together at the NFL Combine. Maybe, just maybe, something's brewing there with those two potentially teaming up in Chi-Town. All right. Appreciate everybody for tuning in to today's show. If you want more Bears news and rumors and other content, hit the subscribe button. Turn on notifications. We got you covered 24-7-365. My name is Harrison Graham. Bear down. Fill in the blank. The Bears will draft blank at number nine. We have a Spencer Rattler debate. Ah, uh, it's Don Burr. Don Kyrev says, Don Burr, y'all peaked. I will say, the Lions are still going to be tough and a really good team. Would it surprise any of us if five years from now, we're looking back and it's like, man, that really was the Lions' chance. <laughs> I mean, they're up big in the NFC Championship game, can't seal the deal. That, that would be tough for Detroit. But uh, you won't see me shedding any tears. Um... Turtle says Donald Trump. I, I don't think he can get after the quarterback, Turtle, so I don't think he's going to be the pick. Um, Edge from Shane. Uh, let's see. Adunze from Tricky Trips. Trade up to six to get either MHJ or Neighbors. Maybe. If four quarterbacks go in the top four, I, I, I'm thinking about trading up at that point. Could you get MHJ with the trade up to the Chargers at five? It's fun to think about. 
Had a few super chats here. Chris Lopez, trade number one pick for Justin Herbert and some draft capital. Are you taking it? Like, one for Herbert, and I don't think you're getting five, too, but maybe, like, their second. I mean, I pro probably. I mean, I think you'd have to, right? Justin Herbert's pretty damn good, but Chargers aren't great. Andres. By the way, Rolly, could you imagine if Harbaugh traded – Justin to, Herbert and took McCarthy number one. He's going to do number that. Number one? He's going to do that. No, he's going to do that with New England at three, actually. That would be hilarious. Andre says, need that MHJ gas mask pick to leave. I'm actually going to do that nine. to Caleb Williams so he'll fall to three. You'll join all these other people trying to tear him down? No, I'm not going to try to tear him down. You are. You are I gonna. am going to tear him down. <laughs> I honestly think if a Caleb Williams gas mask thing leaked, he'd still go. Not unless there was something else in that gas mask. Like, uh, what did someone say earlier? Crystal? Yeah, I said it. Nah. <laughs> I don't think he's get, getting drafted You're going to get uh, Jesse on the phone? Uh, we, uh, yeah, you can still go number one. Math, not yeah, so fast. Yeah, it's Crystal. I, but, but three. <laughs> three is probably the farthest Math would drop him. <laughs> oh, man. Caleb Williams and Drake May are available for the Patriots. Who do you take? You guys are not going to believe what I'm going to say. Are you going to say Caleb? I'm going to say Drake May. Oh, you're just I, saying that because you know he's not going to be there. Just because I – no, 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 no. I'm saying that because that is the person I want. There could be prime fucking Peyton Manning on the board. <laughs> I'm still taking Drake May. And you guys – You just want your college I just NFL want my to, guy. You Drake, want I've rooted for Drake May for the past two seasons. He's my favorite college quarterback of all time. I want him on my professional team. Like, that is one of the coolest situations ever. How often do you get your favorite college player I, to I be drafted that. by your NFL team or Tricky. professional team and be that franchise guy potentially? Tricky. Maybe Roley has been hit with the gas mask. Uh, who knows? Who knows? I like Drake. He, he, he's my QB, too. I'm I've not going to come out here and say he's going to be better than Caleb. Yes, I will. You but <laughs> um, it's certainly who I'd rather have more. And – I'm just willing to go to bat for my guy, man. Oh, man. Drake is my guy. Don Burr, how much is it going to hurt when, by 2025, Caleb Williams is better than the Lions QB situation? How much is that going to hurt? That's what we're hoping, at least. I think there's a real chance that happens. Real chance that happens. All right, uh, we got another segment coming up. It is uh, ESPN 7 around mock draft. Then we'll get to our mailbag. So if you have any questions, fire up the Super Chats or use hashtag Bears. We'll get to all of those. But coming up next, let's react to ESPN's mock draft. Welcome into Bears Now by Chat Sports. I'm Harrison Graham. On today's show, we are going to react to NFL Draft Analyst Matt Miller's ESPN 7-round mock draft for the Chicago Bears, as the Bears currently have four selections. We'll get to those in just a moment. But first, hit the subscribe button, because we offer daily Bears videos, weekly mock drafts, my own. Sometimes we're reacting to others. Other draft coverage as we are in draft SZN. Might do a fan-led mock draft soon. Stay tuned for that. Road to 100K, baby. Trying to get to 100,000 subscribers. Help us out. Subscribe for free uh, as you can be a part of the initial 100,000 here at Chicago Bears now. All right, let's get to this ESPN Bears mock draft. I don't think any reputable mock draft at this point moving forward will have any other selection at number one overall. Caleb Williams uh, with the uh, is the pick here. Uh, we'll uh, read off what Matt Miller had to say about this, saying the Bears trading Justin Fields to Pittsburgh cements their selection of a quarterback at number one. Williams is not only the best one in the class, but also the best of the past decade. The Bears have built a fantastic supporting cast, allowing Williams the chance to see instant success, he'll be a week one starter and could have a C.J. Stroud-like impact here. I do believe that Caleb Williams can be special, not only because of his ability, but believe it or not, because the Bears have actually done a damn good job of putting good infrastructure in place. The only thing um, that I question is keeping Matt Eberflus, but 
They got a good offensive staff, so you can't really harp that too much. Shane Waldron's here. Uh, you go out and get Thomas Brown. You get Chris Beatty, the old Chargers receivers coach. You get Keenan Allen. Uh, you already have DJ Moore. You have Cole Komet. You have another top 10 pick. You had DeAndre Swift. Like The Bears, for the first time, maybe ever, have put a rookie quarterback in a position to hit the ground running. C.J. Stroud did not have as much working for him on paper going into Houston as Caleb Williams will have here. Now, that doesn't mean Caleb Williams is going to be better than Stroud was last year, but I think it's possible. I think he's talented enough, and I think this team has enough talent to help him do it. So I'm excited about this. You should be excited about it. Uh, the Bears, for the first time in a while, have set up a quarterback to have immediate success in this league. Now, predict Caleb Williams' rookie stats. I'm talking completion percentage, touchdown, interceptions, passing yards, rushing yards. Like, give me hell, 64.2% passing. We'll go 3,648 yards. It's just off the rip here. 24 touchdowns, 11 picks. And then I'll go 350 rushing yards, uh, five more rushing touchdowns, and some fumbles in there. He'll definitely fumble some. But I think he'll have a really good rookie season. I'm not ready to s declare him a 4,000-yard passer as a rookie, but I wouldn't completely rule it out either. So you go through these first eight picks before the Bears select again, and it fell nicely. And you see this a lot in mocks with 2-3 being Daniels or May, regardless of order. How about – uh, Miller having Minnesota trading up to three with New England to take Drake May. J.J. McCarthy to Denver in a trade up with four. So big, two big trades there. Chargers take Marvin Harrison Jr. at five. Giants take Malik Neighbors at six. Tennessee takes Joe Alt at seven. And then the Falcons get their hands on Dallas Turner at eight, which has been a pretty popular mock draft selection as well. As has Roma Dunze at number nine to Chicago. This seems to be the most common pick for the Bears at nine when you just look at these national mock drafts. You see Roma Dunze at nine all the time because four quarterbacks are going to go. Typically, Joe Alt goes. The other two receivers go. And then usually Atlanta takes Dallas Turner. Now, we don't know how it's going to play out in real life, but I do think there's a scenario where you do get one of these top three receivers without trading up. Here's Matt Miller again saying, get your franchise quarterback at number one overall and find his new best friend at number nine. That's the model for the Bears in this draft if no tradeback opportunities are attractive. Now, I would argue even if one of the receivers are there at nine, just don't trade back. Just take that player with that selection. And look, one of these top three receivers at nine, it is very hard to turn down. Like the more I think about it and running through the different scenarios, like, I don't see how you trade down from it unless you just get blown away with the trade offer. Because, again, blue chip, blue chip, blue chip, help the quarterback, help the quarterback, help the quarterback. These top three receivers are blue chip prospects, and they all will help the quarterback. So it is kind of hard for me to sit here and say, yeah, I'd rather trade down than take Roma Dunze. I don't know if I would, man. The guy's 6'3", runs in the mid 4 4s. Four he fights like hell for the football. He plays through contact. His contact balance is excellent. He's a big play machine. I mean, the guy did it all at Washington, and not just because of gimmicky, like, mismatches that he got. Like, he, like I said, he played through contact well. He ran a lot of different routes. So, uh, sure-handed, too. Only three drops on 92 catches. So, um, I like this guy a lot. I do think he's a touch behind Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors, but he's still very, very good. And when you think about a potential trio of DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, and Roma Dunze, I mean – that is something spectacular. It really, really is. I mean, you're talking about true, two number ones and Moore and Allen. A Dunze, who has a rookie on most teams, would be a really good number two and maybe even a one for a few teams. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I could sign up for that. It gives you insurance for Keenan Allen, who's getting a little bit older. If for some reason a contract extension doesn't work out. Um, and more importantly, it just it gives you another big-time weapon on your offense, which – I think uh, is something we should all be rooting for. Uh, if you want to go root for your favorite teams in person, well, go get your tickets with game time because, look, we're not going to call out any names, but a lot of online ticketing services are complicated. You can't figure out how to find your tickets once you purchase them. With game time, it's very easy. They tell you exactly what's going on. You can see your exact vantage point for whatever game you want to go to, whether it's at Wrigley Field, if you want to go watch the White Sox, the Bulls, 
or the Bears when football season comes around. The Blackhawks, if you want to go check out some action on the ice, uh, go check it out. What Game Time specializes in, too, is last-minute ticket deals. They got flash sales, zone deals. They're always going to show you like what the best prices available are as well, which I really, really appreciate. And uh, what I also appreciate is seeing exactly what my vantage point will be, especially if it's a stadium or a venue that I'm not super familiar with. Uh, then I can know exactly, okay, this is a good seat. I'm not going to be blocked by some random, you know, uh, concrete post that I have to lean around the entire game. Game time has it all. And at times, I buy tickets the day of, minutes, hours before the event, get my ticket delivered straight to me digitally. And it's all digital now. It's, uh, uh, you got to figure out uh, what you're doing online. And uh, game time makes it easy. So download the app. Link is in the comments and in the description to redirect you to the app store. Or you can just search game time, see that. Big white letter G with the black background. That is their logo. Use promo code CHATSPORTS to get $20 off your first purchase with Game Time. Best seats, last minute, lowest price guaranteed. Go check it all out with Game Time. No second round picks, so we jump to the third round. That, of course, is Jonah Ellis, the edge out of Utah. Round three, pick number 75. Uh, really productive player for the Utes last year. Had 12 sacks, 16 tackles for loss. Uh, got his paw on a few footballs as well with three breakups. Had a forced fumble also. And look, in a vacuum, you could argue that edge is a bigger need than receiver. I'm just kind of in the camp of if you can get one of those top three receivers, you do it, which is why I agree with that pick at nine by Matt Miller. But yeah, make no mistake. Like opposite of Montez Sweat, you don't have like, Big time help. Now I'm not. I don't think Jonah Ellis is like a plug and play day one starter, but he's absolutely a guy that can rotate in. He's a little undersized for a four three edge. He's six two two forty eight, but bring him in in nickel dime packages. Be that third rusher and uh, uh, be a different looking pass rusher that could come into the game and uh, give you more of a speed look coming off the edge. What is the Bears' bigger need right now? Wide receiver or edge? Again. If I'm just like looking at the entire roster, you could probably, especially for this next year, you could probably say edge. But Keenan Allen's older. You don't have a ton of depth at receiver. So you get one of those top dogs. That's, uh, that's the direction I'm going to go. Love this pick here, by the way. Round four, pick 122, Christian Mahogany, the guard out of Boston College. I think he's a top three or four guard in this class. If he falls to day three, it's a home run. I think he could go in the third round. Uh, pretty good PFF grades last year, 75 overall. Pass blocking was good, so was the run blocking. Didn't give up a single sack, gave up just seven hurries all season long. Uh, he plays with good power, and he's mobile. So he's kind of got the combination of both. You look at his relative athletic score here. Um, the height and weight kind of checks out for what the Bears like. Not too bulky, someone who can move around, which all that green is for the athletic stuff, so... He kind of checks those boxes. Pretty good arm uh, length, too, for a guard uh, as well. And look, when you think about this offensive line, yeah, Mahogany's probably not a day one starter. Um, he would probably be your either first or second backup guard. But you got to think beyond 2024, especially with this offensive line on the interior. Uh, Tevin Jenkins and Nate Davis, there is a very real chance that at least one and potentially even both those guys are gone after this year. Now, I would like Tevin to be here long term, but – got injury concerns maybe both sides can't come to an agreement that makes sense I think he's one guy for the Bears that you really can't afford to overpay on like it's got to be something that's at least fair if not a little team friendly or at least some kind of incentive laden deal with his injury history Nate Davis if he doesn't have a great year you can get out of his deal pretty easily after 2024 Mahogany gives you a quality backup as a rookie and someone who I think is a plug and play starter in 2025 uh, if one of those guys goes uh, gives you more depth there, more insurance. Uh, I think in round four, that's that's a very, very good pick for a guy that I think is worthy of going top 100 in this draft. So there you have it, the seven-round mock draft for the Bears. Again, no picks after the fourth here. You get the Caleb Williams-Roma Dunze combo, which I think could be absolutely special for the next decade. Get a good speed rusher in Jonah Ellis out of Utah in the third round. And then I think a potential future starter in Christian Mahogany at guard out of Boston College. By the way, Ryan Poles played offensive line at Boston College, and that's neither here nor there. You get him in the fourth round as well. Grade this Bears mock draft from ESPN. A, B, C, D, or F. I think it's pretty good. I mean, I'd probably go like an A, A-. I mean, I don't really 
harp on any of these picks. Like Ellis, you know, scheme wise is probably a little small, but again, you're getting him in the third round, and he was a productive pass rusher, so it's hard to argue with that. It's an it's a home run at one and nine, and then I think the value of mahogany is very good. So I'd probably give this an A A minus for Matt Miller. Let me know how you guys would grade it. All right. There you have it. ESPN seven round mock draft reaction here on Chicago Bears. Now, if you want more Bears draft coverage, don't forget to subscribe. Super chat from the Bears. He says, sign Odell Beckham Jr. plus draft wide receiver next year in the first or second round. Uh, we'll definitely answer this in further detail in our mailbag. Definitely want to hit this one, Nick. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you could do that. Um, OBJ is a three. I mean, is definitely not a bad option. I just like, are the Bears a team he wants to go to? Are the Is he a player the Bears want? Like, I, I think there could be some questions on both sides. Like, OBJ, like, yeah, I have fairly high hopes for this team next year, but I also don't have Super Bowl aspirations. At this point in his career, he's probably signing with a team that he feels has a chance to win a Super Bowl next year, which maybe the Bears have a tiny chance, but it realistically, that big-time Super Bowl window probably opens in 2025, so uh, I'd be surprised by it. Um, I will say this. If they sign him, it will be after the draft. They will not sign him before the draft because they're going to play the draft out, see if they get a quality receiver in here. If not, then yeah, I could see them circling back to free agency and uh, bringing a wide receiver on board. Use hashtag Bears or Super Chat to get your questions answered on the show. Hashtag Bears or Super Chat. Uh, we would greatly appreciate it. Anyone can give you 300. He would give you. I don't know what that means, Travis. We need more questions, too, by the way. Yeah. AJ said, I'd rather re-sign Yannick Ngakwe to a one-year deal than take any of these edges at nine. I kind of disagree, man. Gakwe was not that good last year. I thought he played a little better once Sweat got in, but I would not take him over Dallas Turner or Jared Verse or a lot too. Now, rookie edges don't always turn out to be great as rookies. That's usually a position that takes a year, but Ngakwe is someone you sign after the draft if you clearly just need an edge still. Like say they don't get an edge in the first round and just don't get one at all perhaps. Uh, I, I, I'm not opposed to bringing Ngakwe back, but if you're telling me if I'd rather have Jared Verse or Ngakwe, I mean, I'm taking Jared Verse. Taking Jared Verse. Hashtag Bears or Super Chat. A few coming in there from Tricky, Mike G, Nexus getting in there. Let's get a few more. Get a few more. Chez, that's a good question. Throw a hashtag Bears on there. I'd love to answer it. But uh, I'll kind of briefly answer it. How confident are you with the O-line next year? I think right now the Bears probably have, If assuming Nate Davis is better than last year. I'm not expecting all pro, but like he had the stuff with his mom who passed away. Obviously, that was a tough deal for him. Played pretty good for a while. Then he got hurt. Wasn't as good late in the year. Like if he gives you a B season where he plays, let's say he plays 14 of 17 games and plays pretty well. Uh, and Te Tevin stays healthy for the most part. I think this is a B minus type of offensive line right now. If you, what, it could be better though. Like, what if you upgrade from Braxton Jones, or what if Darnell Wright takes a massive jump and is like a high level Pro Bowler in year two? What if the center position is even better than we think? I, it's definitely better than last year, but it's still not great. I mean, Ryan Bates or Coleman Shelton, whoever it is, it's not like you got some supreme option there. I think you have two decent options. Definitely better than Lucas Patrick and Cody Whitehair, but yeah, I mean, like, what if you get Joe Alt and he's better than Darnell Wright was as a rookie? Then you're you're cooking. So, we'll see. We'll see. Hashtag Bears or Super Chat. We've got a few in here. We'll get this thing started here, and uh, but still, still fire away as we could certainly use a few more coming up on Chicago Bears now. Paleo, we see you as well. We'll answer that Super Chat. Coming up here in just a few moments. All right, mailbag time right now on the channel. It's time for a Bears Now mailbag. I am Harrison Graham. We got F. Marsh back here. He says, would you rather have Joe Alt or Dallas Turner? I think Joe Alt's clearly, maybe not clearly, but he's the better prospect. Um, 
I think he's more polished at his position than Turner is at his. Um, his athletic testing was better than I thought it would be, and I think his film this year was better than any of the other tackles in the class. Wag is close, but he plays on the right side, and he's not quite as athletic. Uh, so I do think Alt's the better prospect. I think Edge is a slightly bigger need uh, because you can more than get by with Braxton Jones. Ryan Poles, I think, put it nicely saying that he's a starting left tackle in this league, but he did kind of hint that, hey, like, if we have an opportunity to upgrade, we're not going to close the door on that. I think Joe Alt would be an upgrade. So I'll let you guys decide. I would probably go Alt if both are available. I, I just think he's the, the better player, but Turner's upside's big. Type JA for Joe Alt, DT for Dallas Turner. Pick a player down in the comments. Sal Eats says, if the Bears tell the media they're taking Caleb at one, how long until they can bring him in to start working? I want an edge at nine. Well, the Caleb stuff first, even if they go public that they're taking Caleb, they can't bring him in and start, like, you know, doing, like, on-field workouts and stuff like that, like installation of the, like, deep installation of the playbook. I know on the top 30 visit, you know, they're probably going to do some of those things, but they can't, like, just get, you know, have him start working out. Like, players on the team right now can't do organized workouts at the facility. It, it's part of the rules. Like, you just can't do that right now at the facility. So, um, as far as edge at nine goes, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not opposed. I, I If a receiver's there, that's the direction I would go. Open to a tackle as well. So, really kind of just depends who's on the board. Chris Lopez, trade the number one pick for Justin Herbert and some draft capital. Are you taking it? I mean, probably, right? Uh, Justin Herbert, you know, say what you want. He's pretty proven in this league. I think at worst he's a top-10 quarterback, and the Bears haven't had a top-10 quarterback in this league ever. Maybe one year of Jay Cutler he was top-10, but um, I, I would probably have to do that. Um, unless you're just sold that Caleb Williams is a top-five quarterback in this league, which I think he has that potential, but we know Herbert is close to that already, uh, even if the Chargers haven't won a ton under him. The Bears sign Odo Beckham Jr. plus draft a receiver next year in the first or second round. You could do that. I, I'll say this. If they're going to bring in OBJ, I think that's a post-draft move. Um, you're going to go through the draft, see if you do get one of those guys at nine or get a guy on day two that you like that can be that number three guy for you. If that doesn't happen, if the draft comes and goes and it's DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, and Tyler Scott's kind of your clear third option, then yeah, I could see the Bears being interested in a free agent at that point, maybe even OBJ. I'd still be surprised if they brought him in here. I think he'll sign with a team that's more considered as a true Super Bowl contender in 2024, but who knows? Like, I could see OBJ waiting until after the draft and kind of just taking a view at the whole landscape for all 32 teams. Paleo, with Tevin's injury history, what is your thought on letting this year play out and then you franchise tag him until you finally get a team or until you get a team friendly deal? Perhaps. The, the problem, Paleo, is if he goes out there and has a mostly healthy season and falls out, then you might be looking at $18, 20000000 million per year for Tevin. Robert Hunt just got five years for $100 million. I think Tevin Jenkins is a more talented guard than Robert Hunt. So if he can go out there and have a healthy year, someone's going to pay him big money. So um, if you're going to get a team-friendly deal, you might have to take the risk and do it now. Which, yeah, it's it's risky, and I think you'd have to – have some incentives built in. I, I don't think the Bears would do a reckless contract with him, given his injury history. But, man, when he's healthy, he is he is a game changer on that offensive line. Subscribe to the channel. We got daily Bears content for 100% free. We cover news when news drops. We react to the wild rumors that are surrounding this team, draft coverage, free agency, trade buzz, uh, and everything else, stadium talk. Uh, we cover it all, so hit that sub button. Nexus Can says, what would you give us to trade with the Chargers for a receiver with the fifth pick? What would you give up? Um, I've kind of explored this, and if you're watching live, i got a trade idea coming up with the Chargers, actually, so stay tuned. But, like, I'd give up nine in that Carolina pick next year if it was Marvin Harrison Jr. and maybe even neighbors, too. Um, that Carolina pick is valuable, man. It's going to be a top 40 selection next year. I think the Panthers are still a while away, so that's going to be a high pick. So um, you pair that with number nine to go up four spots and get a big-time weapon that can be a number one in this league. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd be willing to do it to pair MHJ with Caleb Williams. 
a real shake. Do you feel the front office is overvaluing Braxton Jones? I don't really. I mean, Ryan Poles came out and said, I think he can be a left tackle. Or I think he's a starting left tackle in this league. But he kind of like went on and said, if we can upgrade there, we'll certainly look to do it. He's basically saying what I think is true. He is a starter. There's 32 of them. He's certainly top 32. I would even probably say he's in that you know, 15 to 22 range among left tackles. And uh, But if you can get a top 10 guy in here, certainly have to consider that. So I don't think they're overvaluing them. I think they feel like they're okay there if they don't upgrade. But they certainly are not closing the door on upgrading there either. They're in a good spot with that because worst case scenario, you've got a guy entering his third year that's been a mostly at least above average starter for two years now. All right, prize picks is it's just way better than above average. It is the premium daily fantasy sports app in North America, the largest, the most used fantasy, daily fantasy sports app in North America. And you can download the app today at prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use the code CLNS to get a deposit match up to $100. This, I would argue, look, Football season is the best. We all know that. But when it comes to daily fantasy, this exact moment on the calendar is hard to beat. You got baseball underway. You got March Madness coming down the stretch. NBA, NHL making their playoff pushes. I got a little two-player season long MLB play going right now. Cody Bellinger, give me the more on 24 and a half homers. Love the Cubbies bringing him back. I think he hits 25 plus. Adolis Garcia for the Rangers who just carried them in the postseason last year. I think he hits 33 with ease. Give me the more there as well. 10 to win 30, but you got daily plays like hits, RBIs, combo plays, uh, two to six player entries. You can cross over sports. So much options right now with all these different sports going at once. More or less, pick more or less, risepicks.com slash CLNS. Use the code CLNS. They'll match you up to 100 bucks when you deposit. Okay, let's keep it rolling here. DC Viper, could the Bears trade down and draft Brian Thomas or Jared Verse if top guys all get drafted? Absolutely. Um, now, there's only a couple different scenarios. And first of all, it kind of depends. Top guys, our thought on that and the Bears' thought on that could be totally different. But, you know, there. There is an exact scenario where it's like the quarterbacks, the top three receivers, and Joe Walt are all gone. So, yeah, maybe in that scenario you're trading down. I would love Brian Thomas or Jared Verse in a trade down. I wouldn't even mind either of those players at nine. Thomas at nine feels a little rich. Verse at nine is a little rich. But, like, they're impactful players at positions of need. So, like, if that's the worst-case scenario, you get one of those dudes at nine, I'm certainly not upset with it. But, yeah. You could trade down for one of those guys, you know, maybe trade between 12 and 15 and get one of them there. Uh, I would certainly be happy with that. Mike G, would you trade our own second next year plus a late round pick this year for T. Higgins? Well, your latest pick this year is a fourth. So um, fourth this year and your own second next year. I don't know if I would, man. The trade market hasn't been that strong. Like, I mean, maybe your third this year and a third next year for T. Higgins. Like, I don't think the Bengals have a ton of leverage right now because the, the receivers in this draft are so damn good. So they might just end up keeping them on the tag. That would not surprise me. Um, you know, the problem, too, is if you make that move, you got to be ready to pay him $25 million a year. I mean, at minimum, he's getting what Calvin Ridley got, and I think he's getting more because he's four or five years younger. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think the Bengals – have as much leverage right now with that T. Higgins situation. I mean, Legereus Sneed was a far better player last year at a close to equal position at corner, and he went for a third and a seventh round pick swap. So um, there, there are some medical concerns there, I think. But still, I think it just kind of shows the trade market for even elite players at big-time positions is not that strong. Turtle, how did, far do you think the Bears have to trade down from nine to get a second rounder this year? It's a good question. It's hard to know. Um, probably at least 14 or 15. I, you know, maybe the 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 Raiders at 13, if they're QB desperate and they want to come up to nine, maybe they throw you your second. But I feel like if they do, you're probably throwing back a fourth or something like that. So, um, you know, Seattle at 16 is, is maybe a team. What if the Bengals at 18 just are like, screw it, let's get Brock Bowers, and they give you 18 – and I think it's 49, their second-round pick, or 50 uh, to move up to nine. I could see something like that. Rams at 19, but I don't think if you're dropping to, like, 11, 12, 13, you're likely to get a second-rounder. I think you're probably talking more like a third. 
Who is your favorite Bears player of all time? For me, it's Devin Hester. It's about time he's getting into the Hall of Fame this year. Who is your favorite Bears player of all time? Drop his name in the chat right now. Zhao, what is your opinion about Gabriel Murphy? He's the other UCLA edge rusher. His brother Grayson's on the team as well. He could be a late-round draft pick. But um, I think middle rounds, good rusher. Um, I think he's you know, a tick undersized for a 4-3 edge, but, you know, is he is 75 too rich for him? Maybe, you know, I'd probably go fourth round, but we'll see. It's it's hard to know. I think there's a lot of guys between, like, 50 and 125 that could go anywhere in that range. He's probably in the latter part of that, but he's probably in that grouping. Eddie Padilla, Joe Walt, Neighbors, Turner, Brock, all available at nine. Who do you take? Neighbors. No hesitation. Neighbor, I would rank that neighbors, alt. I like Bowers better as a prospect, but I think I have to factor a need a little bit there. I'd probably lean Turner and then Bowers. Um, but neighbors won alt, too. I mean, it, and they would be a, a, a notable jump above the other two, I would say, at this point in time. Give me a follow on Twitter. If you didn't get your question answered, you can ask me over there. It's at HGramNFL. Uh, appreciate the love, appreciate the support that you guys continue to show us here on the channel, also on social media. Uh, almost at 9,000 followers over there, so if you want to help me out, at HGramNFL, would greatly, greatly appreciate it. All right. K says Jay Cutler, Walter Payton. Look, I love the old timers. I, I, I just, I personally, my rule of thumb, I can't name players that I didn't watch when I, like, before I was alive, so like Walter Payton's the Bears goat in my opinion. He's just not my favorite Bears player ever because I, I wasn't fortunate enough to watch him. Earl Acker's close. I just there was just something about Devin Hester. Every time a team punted or kicked off, you felt like something magical would happen, and you just a you don't feel that way anymore. Hopefully, some of that comes back with the kick, new kickoff rule. And B, I just, you know, there's been a few other guys over the years, but he, it was different with him, man. It, it was different with him. Matt Forte, Peanut Tillman, those are some good ones. So, yeah, man. There's plenty of good, there's no wrong answers. Sweetness, of course. Charles, gotcha. Peyton for all time, Earl Acker for my lifetime. Yeah, Earl Acker's right there, man. I mean, Lance Briggs is another one. I'm a big Peanut Tillman guy. I loved him when he was with the Bears. Um, but yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Alex Brown, great bear. Devin Hester, yeah. Yeah, those are all good ones. Those are all good ones. All right, um, we got one more segment to go, and then we'll wrap things up here. The year you played center. I never played. Maybe I would have been a better option than Sam Buckley. All right, last segment here. We are going to get into some draft trade ideas. So buckle up as we do just that. We are officially on the road to 100,000 subscribers here on What's Up. We good? Oh. Got to reset here. Roll a little, uh, little uh, technical air there. Little did, did Stanton hit a homer? Did he come up to bat again? Uh, so, uh, <laughs> uh, is he only gonna have? Are y'all, what's it at now? What's the offer? It's a, it was at thirty four. I'm I'm sure they will not even give an offer anymore. <laughs> All right, he'll probably get one more at bat in the top of the ninth, but um, no, it's, it's it, that would be some miracle. So are you going to hate the Yankees even more after this? Yes. I'll hate them even more if they win. Cause I have an also, are they going to win? It's 4-4. Are you serious? It's in, it's in the top of the seventh. It's first and third one out. I also have an eight-game parlay um, on the MLB today that is also $5 to win 250 And I'm not shitting you. I am five for five right now. Oh, in man. the Astros would be six for what six. What happened? Did they just have a blow-up inning? Yes, where Framer Valdez lost all control, Walk City, walked in a couple he runs. He wasn't that good last year. That's not surprising. So, brutal. Yeah, tough scene, tough scene. Damn, brutal. All right, so whenever you're ready. Yeah. All right, here we go. 
We are officially on the road to 100,000 subscribers as we recently passed 90,000. Who wants to join the family? It's free. You click one button, the subscribe button. Hit that button right now. Trying to get to 100K. We're at 90,000, almost 500. 9,500 and change away. Join Bears now forever and be a part of the initial 100K. I'm Harrison Graham, and you are watching Chicago Bears Now. On today's show, we got five blockbuster Chicago Bears draft trade ideas. All of these trades involve Bears draft picks. So let's get to it here. And how about this first one to kick things off? How about trading for Hassan Reddick, who the Philadelphia Eagles have been reportedly shopping as they were able to restructure Josh Sweat and keep him? Doesn't sound like Reddick is long for the Eagles world. This was my trade idea here. Maybe it's a draft night trade situation. Uh, Hassan Reddick comes to the Bears. The Eagles get the Bears third round pick. I don't think Philadelphia is playing with the position of strength here. I think maybe a fourth rounder could even get it done. But if you really want to win that bidding war, I think you'd probably have to go with the third. And look, if just talking about the player, the third is probably worth it, right? I mean, he's had at least 11 sacks in four straight seasons. Two years ago, he had 16 with Philadelphia, but he's been very consistent. He's kind of scheme-proof. He's probably been a little better historically in a 3-4, but he can definitely play at a high level in a 4-3. You pair him with Montez Sweat on the outside, that's going to free up Javon Dexter for one-on-one -on -one opportunities on the interior. And we saw down the stretch, he was able to really improve uh, uh, last year in his rookie campaign. Andrew Billings can continue to just be a bully in the middle of that defense as well. And again, the reports are that Philadelphia are shopping Reddick because he wants more money than they're willing to pay. Now, that's the part of it you would have to work through. Now, does Ryan Poles want to bring him in and pay another edge big time money? I don't know if it would cost quite as much as Sweat, 25 a year, because Reddick is older. I think he's about 30 now, or he's going to be 30, but you know, do you give him like 22 a year, 23? Uh, obviously, you would have to structure it in a way to keep this year's cap hit a little down after having a busy free agency uh, spending a period, especially with the Keenan Allen trade. But uh, the Bears could make it work. The Eagles are willing to move on. Maybe, just maybe, something could happen here. Trade idea number two, trade up for Marvin Harrison Jr. If you watched our mock draft earlier this week, going to bring back that trade here. Uh, the Bears trade up from 9 to 5, and uh, they send uh, that second-round pick via Carolina to Los Angeles as that's going to be a very high-value pick. A lot of teams are already valuing next year's draft a lot anyway, and if the Chargers kind of think, eh, 2024 is a transition year, we lost our top two receivers, um, you know, we're fixing the cap for a year, uh, maybe we just get an extra pick next year that's going to be in the top 40 in almost all certainty. And Look, reports here, too, are that quarterbacks could go one, two, three, four. Caleb at one, and then a combination of Drake May, Jaden Daniels, and J.J. McCarthy could be the top four picks. And if that's the case, if you're Ryan Poles, and look, I don't know how he views Marvin Harrison Jr. versus Malik Neighbors and Roma Dunze, but if he loves Marvin Harrison Jr., maybe it's Neighbors. There's been reports that some teams like Neighbors more. You get your hands on him potentially at number five and you don't have to give up a future first to do it. I think that's very enticing. Now, maybe the Chargers go tell you to F yourself. We're only doing it for your first next year. Okay, fine. You don't do it. I'm not I'm not willing to do that, I don't think. I, I, I think there's a decent enough chance that one of the receivers fall to nine or you can get another blue chip player at a different position. I'm not giving up my first round next year. But you've got that extra second rounder from Carolina that's a valuable pick. For MHJ, I think I would do it. So I want to hear from you. If you want Marvin Harrison Jr. in Chicago, spam MHJ right now. More than once, I want to hear the passion right now from you Bears fans. Get the MHJs in the chat if you want Marvin Harrison Jr. Trade number three, trade down for an edge rusher. Now, I'm not opposed to the idea of taking an edge at nine. But if a team in that kind of 12 to 15 range is willing to trade up, I think you'll still get one of the top three edges in that range. So 
I got an idea with Denver here. They could move up for a quarterback, maybe get the fifth guy, you know, if they don't want to risk uh, a guy falling to 12 that may not be there. They move up to nine, get Bo Nix or Penix, or maybe J.J. hasn't been picked yet for whatever reason. Bears move back, get a third, number 76 overall, plus that 12th pick. Uh, and then I think personally, Turner's probably gone at this point, but he might be gone anyway to Atlanta at eight. I think at least one of these three players, if not two, will still be there at number 12. I think 12 or 13 to Denver or Vegas would be the sweet spot if you're going to trade down for an edge and still feel good about getting one of those guys. You could go further, especially with Law, too. Medical concerns could scare some teams off. But um, if you're unwilling to trade down further, trade down with Denver, trade down with Vegas, one of these teams that could be QB thirsty, and uh, go get your edge that way while still adding a pick in that third round. All right, before we get to our next trade idea here, we got DeAndre Swift jerseys available at chatsports.com slash Swift. Four, he's rocking number four. Get yourself a jersey, nice quality T-shirt, Nike there. Uh, you know it's going to be good. Link is in the comments in the description. Click and shop today to get yourself a DeAndre Swift jersey. Next up, Braxton Jones to the Saints. Let's get a little spicy here as New Orleans is in desperate need of a tackle. Ryan Ramchek, Dennis Allen straight up admitted at the owners' meetings that we don't know if he's going to be back. That knee is not responding well uh, after last season. Um, Trevor Penning's been terrible, the kid out of northern Iowa who they took in the first round a couple of years ago. So the Saints are going to be looking for a tackle. This is the idea I cooked up. They don't have a third or a fourth round pick. Obviously, you're not going to get a second straight up for Braxton Jones. But what about swapping second and thirds? Because, again, Braxton Jones is a starting left tackle in this league and could start for the Saints. Uh, so you swap 45 and 75, you send that third there, uh, and you pick up a fifth as well. So you move up around, get a fifth, they get Jones, they get your third. I think that's pretty fair. And New Orleans is desperate, so they might be willing to do something like this uh, because with them not having picks in the third or fourth round, um, unless they get a tackle for sure at 14, which they probably will, guess what? They still need another one. Uh, so... Uh, don't be shocked uh, if uh, they start perusing for tackles that could be available. And let me be clear, too. These, this only happens for the Bears standpoint of trading Braxton Jones is if Chicago goes offensive tackle with that number nine pick in the first round. But that could happen. They could take Joe Wall. They could take Fawaga. They could take Olu. And I like Braxton. I think people think I don't like Braxton Jones. That is not true. This guy is a fifth-round pick out of Southern Utah, is an above-average left tackle. He's just never going to be an all-pro, in my opinion, because his biggest problem is his play strength is limited and his anchor is limited. So when you face these bull-rushing edges, we saw it with Montez Sweat a couple years ago, which is what got him on the Bears' radar, he can get bullied a little bit, but he's athletic, he can move. The problem is, is if you replace him at left tackle, I don't think the anchor is strong enough for him to be a guard. So at that point, he's just your swing tackle, which is fine, but if I can trade him and get a net day two pick, I, that's kind of hard to turn down, if I'm being honest. like If I can turn him into this, if he's not even going to start for me, then you've gotten more than your money's worth out of that pick. You got two years out of starting out of a fifth round pick, and you turned it into like a net third, which is basically what this would be. So I would be more than happy with that if uh, the Bears do end up upgrading at tackle and are able to trade him. Now make the call. If the Bears draft an offensive tackle, what would you do with Braxton Jones? Type T for trade him or K for keep him. And again, worst case, let him compete over there. Let the rookie earn his stripes. Worst case, he's your swing tackle. Maybe he can play some backup guard too, but I don't think he'd be a starter. Like I don't think you're benching Nate Davis or Tevin Jenkins for Braxton Jones on the interior because I don't think he's strong enough to play guard if I'm being completely honest. All right, last one here. Trade down for Jackson Powers Johnson. Now, there's a few ways you could do this. Maybe you trade down twice. Like maybe you trade down with Denver to 12 and you trade down again to 20 or something like that. But the trade I did here, just to keep it simple, one trade with the Rams. They move up 10 spots. So you get 19. You get their second and a fifth. Moving up 10 spots is a lot. So I think you for sure net a second. I think getting a day three pick there too is possible as well. And the reason I kind of settled on 19 is the Steelers at 20 don't really have a solution at center right now. So 
I think if you want JPJ, you probably got to pick in front of them to be safe. Uh, Jackson Powers Johnson, to me, is the clear best center in this draft. Uh, and what I like about him as well is he has played a lot of guard in college, too. So, like, he's not just, like, center and that's it. He can play guard, and he can play it really, really well. So you've got options there. Like, even if you don't want him to play center or if someone else emerges for whatever reason, guard's a higher impact position. Maybe he's just your Nate Davis replacement next year. Who knows? I do know this. The long-term center is not on this roster. I feel pretty comfortable saying that. Coleman Shelton is an upgrade Band-Aid option from what you've had last year. And I told you guys I don't love Band-Aid options, but he's a pretty decent Band-Aid. He's better than Lucas Patrick. He's better than Cody Whitehair. Uh, I think Ryan Bates is too. I think Ryan Bates is an overall better player than Coleman Shelton, uh, but he just hasn't played as much center. So I'll be curious to see how that shakes out. But listen, you take JPJ, he might just take over right away and start at center. Or maybe he plays guard and maybe you trade Nate Davis to a team in training camp. Who knows? Like, I, I, he's he's a really good player. They, they were at his pro day, so I would not be shocked. Now, I tend to think one of those other premium positions is going to be one they use that pick for, whether they stay at nine or trade down. But um, if you trade down and get a lot of extra capital, maybe just maybe JPJ's in play. All right, so we'll cycle back through the five trades. You let me know which one was your favorite idea. If you like this first one, 75 overall for Hassan Reddick, type one. If you like trade idea number two, type two, it's uh, trading uh, up with the Chargers to select Marvin Harrison Jr. If you like this third pick, which is just a move back for an edge, pick up an extra third after dropping three spots with Denver, type three. If you like this fourth one here, trading Braxton Jones to the Saints, Again, only if you draft a tackle in the first round, you get a second and a fifth. They get Jones in your third, type four. Or if you like this last one, to trade down with L.A. to get Jackson Powers Johnson, drop ten spots, pick up a second, also pick up a fifth, go ahead and type five. All right, there you have it, five blockbuster trade ideas with some NFL draft capital for the Chicago Bears. We'll continue to pump out segments like this, so subscribe and turn on notifications. Bear down. Wasim says, bear down, FGB. What's up, Wasim? What's up, Wasim? It's our li la my last live show of the month, but I think Rolly's got some heat action tomorrow. Uh, that I do. Who that do they I play do. tomorrow? Who do we got tomorrow? Uh, we are playing the Trailblazers. Is Jimmy going to play this time? Um, yes. Is Kevin Love going to return? Yes. Confirmed. They probable. <laughs> so it would take a lot for him not to play. I think. By the way, when did he get back into the like, oh, we actually need him? Because um, wasn't when there he a stopped point? Playing. Oh, it just kind of became obvious. That, that he, yeah, when he stopped playing. Is it a rebounding issue? or like, Rebounding. Um, just overall backup center because our backup centers are Thomas Bryant and Orlando Robinson. Thomas Bryant's one. And, uh, I saw you tweet, he's launching threes dude, now. Dude, he shoots two a game. He never <laughs> fucking makes them. It drives me up a wall. He I didn't even so know. He, bad. I didn't know if he ever shot threes. Did uh, he just start doing that recently? Um, he doesn't defend. He's not the worst finisher inside, like off the pick and roll. Or if he they used to be him. like a ten point guy a few years yeah, ago. Yeah, like he's not the worst in that aspect, but he is so bad defensively, yeah. and I swear he gets out rebounded. Yeah. Like Kevin Love is just so good with the great box rebounder. outs, rebounds, yeah. the he's outlet. Always, always been a great. Rebounder. Only a thirty five percent three point shooter, but it it's feels like he makes big, more than he actually does. Like. Well, he's also he's just good enough that defenses have to respect. Him. Right, and when that matters more and than when Bam else. goes off the floor, they can play Jimmy with Kevin Love like and run out. a little bit of a spacing offense. So it was really one of those situations. Where it was like holy shit, we didn't realize how good we had it with Kevin Love as the backup center until he was out of line. The scroll says, "How did you know JPJ is still there at 52 with that LA trade?" No, no, no I t I'm taking him at 19 in that scenario, which is high for a center, but I think the Steelers at 20 could very well take. Again, I think that's the least likely one. I don't think they end up with JPJ, but no, that, that was the scenario there. All right, Jeeping Arizona. Uh, we're about to get out of here, so unless you get a super chat in, we're going to sign off. But he says, what's more likely, trading up for neighbors or down for an edge? I would guess down for an edge is more likely. Especially, Great question, by especially the way. if it's true that some teams like neighbors over MHJ. Like, neighbors is going to go quick. But. If four QBs go, Rolly, to start this draft, I mean, 
trading up for neighbors or MHJ feels like at least a possibility at that point. It's definitely a possibility. So, I think both those scenarios could happen, GB. Like, let's say neighbors slips past the Giants at six. I'm getting on the horn with Tennessee probably, and I'd move up two spots for them. Give them nine and 75, move up two spots. Because Tennessee could still get their tackle at nine. Because Atlanta's not taking one at eight. So, definitely possible. All right, guys, good stuff. Last live show for the month of March. Enjoy your holiday weekend, whether you celebrate or not. Good basketball, man. We got the. We didn't even talk about that. Sweet 16 tonight. Very excited. Big game, Tomorrow. Illinois. Illinois, Illinois State. tonight. The Fighting Illini. I, I still. I like. I think the Cyclones. I'm win. leaning Iowa State, but it wouldn't surprise me if Illinois blitzes them. They need Terrence Shannon to go nuclear. This goes one of two ways for me. Illinois either wins in a blowout, or Iowa State wins in a very low-scoring game. See, I was going to say if there's a blowout, I think it would. I don't know if Illinois is good enough defensively to blow out Iowa State. My thing is, if Iowa State can't stop Illinois, they have no chance yeah. of keeping up with Illinois. Yeah, that's probably true. Like Iowa State does not want to play a track meet in this game. It's sure. very. It's two very contrasting styles. Yeah, no doubt. All right, we're going to get out of here. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Enjoy the weekend. Bear down. We'll see you guys.